Rugby on Off the Ball. Well, we were just going to do a random routine preview of the Ireland England Six Nations uh, game, which is taking place tomorrow. But uh, I didn't realise that we were in the presence of the uh, Hearthsport.ie Coach of the Year, Fiona Hayes. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Jar, how are you? Congratulations. Knew, oh, look, um, I'm doing nothing. I'm only standing out in the field. It's the girls that do all the work. So I think it's just uh, an effort from uh, UL Bowes finishing top two. I was just lucky enough to get it. And I'm female as well. So look, it's, it's her sport. I have to throw it out to home. And now, um, how is your coaching career going? You, you, it's, I, like anybody who listens knows that you watch everything and adore the sport. Uh, but I suspect that's the bit that gives you the most fulfillment and enjoyment, is it? And the most heartache also, Ger. <laughs> and the most heartache. Um, yeah, look, it's going well. I'm with UL Bows. Um, so we started back in September in the AIL and um, the women's Aviva, as you know, is, are, is the women's AIL final is going to be played in the Aviva. So we finished top of the table um, and we're against Railway Union um, who've beaten us once in the league and we've beaten them once in the league so it's uh, not this Sunday the following Sunday so I'm looking forward to that we'll see if, I, if I'm that great after that <laughs> um, how, how have you changed as a coach over the year do you think? Um, yeah I think I've gotten a lot less crankier I suppose I uh, I used to be a, a bit of a cranky player, um, a bit of a mouthpiece to the ref. So I'm trying to instill not to do that into my players. And just with the, the young people coming through, I suppose I see things differently, um, all the different characters. So as a coach, I've, I've grown in a way. Yes, I, I, I know the game, I study that. But I've more so grown in in my people skills and how I've got everyone to to kind of jump on board and buy into to what I'm selling. And that's the interesting thing about a coach is, is trying to get everyone with you because if you don't have them these days in particular they won't play for you Is this something that you'd love to do more of in the future? Is this part of your grand plan? or Is it is it uh, incidental to see how it goes or, or would you start beginning to dream of being able to do this on a, a more structured basis? Yeah, look, it, it's always something I've always wanted to do. I, I've said it from early days, but um, the doors haven't opened that way for me. And I suppose I'm um, starting out in the game as well. I have a full-time job, so it would involve me leaving that to, to jump into that side of things fully. And um, I'm happy kind of where I am at. I'm trying to grow as as a coach because obviously I've played uh, for a long time. I've been coaching probably about 12 years as well, or 11 years, I suppose, now as well. So I have been doing it for a while but look I think it's the hard work has to be put in and uh, hopefully doors might open down the down the line for me yeah yeah well congratulations totally well deserved and it'll be great to see what happens in the Aviva um in a couple of weeks time uh this game right like yeah one of the things that we should mark is that the team is doing much better this year than it has done in, in recent years and yet we're still previewing an Ireland England game where we expect there to be a massive difference between the scores uh and while the team is doing great and they've got a good head coach and they've got all the best players, it seems certainly playing for them or many of the best players playing for them at the moment. Mm. We shouldn't lose sight of the fact that we kind of lost a decade here where your team would go into games against England hoping to win and expecting to win in some instances. Yeah, look, and, and we did that in 2013 and 2015 and I suppose that's in the past now and I'm sure there's been many chats on the show about the reasoning behind that. But look, this this squad has had to build itself up. Um, it's at the start of their journey. England, the Premiership in particular over in England, I think has a lot got to do with the, the skill level, um, I suppose the cohesiveness of that England team, the, the professional athlete status, they, they are ahead of us in the past. So look, there was years lost, and I like I I'm, I suppose it's it's that balance they were trying to get the professional. It wasn't working as semi professional. There was sevens athletes there that were professional, so it was all a mix up. And I think in the last year, to be fair to the RFU, they're trying to get a, a clear structure. Um, it was similar last year. We didn't really have a clear structure. Um. Even with the OEL, I'm not even sure what type, if I'll have any of my players next year. So, like, there's still, you know, communication to the, to the I suppose, people on the ground isn't happening as much. But it, you can see that they want, to, they want to get there and they're building and building. And I suppose that's all we're hoping for. And we're seeing it in these performances as well. Because even some of the girls, the likes of Doherty Wall, Linda Zhugang, like, they've been absolutely outstanding. And they've played their AIL and they've played their Interpros as well. So there probably is 
a hybrid structure which might be possible for this team to embrace and also at the same time help the AIL to get up to a higher level? Yeah, look, and that's it. And if that, that's if that's the route they're going down, I'm not even sure, Jared. They might invest in the provinces. It could eventually become um, all those kind of athletes that are on contracts. Those players are on contracts. They might be playing um, a Celtic Cup longer competition with maybe the provinces. So I don't even. I'm not even sure if they're focusing on the L- AIL as the grassroots, as where they want their players to play. I think it probably will be next year that we will see an exact decision and see exactly where it's going so you know you might have more so like almost like uh, the men's game say where you have the, the AIL and there's very rarely crossover with those Munster, Leinster, Connacht players um, they'll be playing I suppose the majority of the if, if the Celtic Cup takes off and if it's expanded I suppose they'll go from that straight into Ireland and maybe back into those camps because I'm coaching down in Limerick and, and same in Dublin they can't the RFU I suppose can't really control what the clubs are doing so much whereas the provinces they'll have full control over those players and um, their programs what they're doing um so even with with myself down in in bows sometimes there's a crossover there and, and you're pulling your hair out because players are in they're out so i as I, I think once it gets on once it pushes on and we get a clear structure it can only grow the game yeah, OK. Uh, we had um, Helena Rowland on, uh, the current England player who's out injured. Uh, she broke her finger mm-hmm. uh, on Off The Ball Breakfast during the week and we were asking her about Scott Beeman and, and what he's like and it seems like he's very, very highly regarded and it does feel like he's had an immediate impact in terms of attention to detail, game plan and also just getting the right players in position and on the pitch. Yeah, you're spot on. So his coaching ability, I'm sure, is unbelievable. As you said, that detail, um, I think we have to give credit as well to Danaher um, in, in defence. There's there's so much detail in, in, in their defence. We've seen a huge growth in that area. So he's got the right people in with him as well. And I, I think it's that culture aspect in listening to the interviews from the players, knowing a few of them, Darty Wall talking um, this week about him creating like culture about what it's like, you know, that they're holding, I suppose, the torch for for little girls that want to go on and become professional athletes. They've got to get into that environment. Um, they've got to feel it, be it, live in it. And I suppose he's gotten something out of them that we haven't previously seen because the likes of I suppose Aoife Way for Doherty Wall I've de- as I said already they're playing some of the best rugby I've seen in a long time and Linda Zhugang was, it was, is immense and it's it's that environment that they're in yes sometimes things aren't going right but their ability to be able to change it, it doesn't seem whereas in the last couple of years Jer, if, if they went down a couple of tries it was almost a head was dropped and they couldn't switch into let's let's move on next job next job. Whereas I see a difference in that with this team. They're they're constantly yes. There might be a few tries we saw it in France, but they're fighting to the death and they are really wanting to get tries of their own. Their their attacking shape is really good to look at. So that would suggest that the off the field distractions have. I mean, I'm sure everything isn't perfect, but there's at least a, a sense that that's being worked on, and we can now talk about the rugby, think about the rugby, and deal with the rugby. Yeah, that's it. And it's, as I've said earlier, it's, it's been growing in that direction. So, you know, people have come in and, and we know there there was issues there. And I suppose he's come in, a fresh guy from England as well. And there will be a lot of respect for him because he's coaching that English setup. And anyone involved in the women's game knows exactly what's going on over there. I, I saw a training session, I think last year, I went over and just watched him train. Um, Link Cantwell invited me over to watch South Africa, but I could England, they, they were playing a game, so they were both training. And just what they do and how they go about their business and the professionalism um, around it, I think think the team have grasped that so him coming in it, it, like stamping that down it, it I would imagine from what I've heard as a character there's he, like this is what we're doing he's very player focused but there's no outside noise noise he doesn't want that involved and you don't hear much from camp either you know I suppose whereas before you'd hear rumblings whereas I'm not hearing anything other than they love what their the coaches are bringing to them and they also love the style that they're they're trying to play especially in attack as I said um Clean and Maloney being back around the squad it's the type of thing as well it's like um, uh, this is all uh, we're turning the page everything is moving on that kind of thing is important right? 
Yeah, absolutely. And she's a class act. And I've said this numerous times. I don't mind if I would rather someone come out and say, Cleena Maloney isn't here because of X, Y and Z. Maybe they can't. But to, to come out and say it was based on form is absolutely ridiculous because, the, you know, I've watched the Premiership. I watch her play. She she was playing out of her skin. Um, not that her in particular is going to fix the line out, but imagine having her even coming on to the to the pitch to, to make an impression on a game. You know, the line out wasn't going great, but um, Neve Jones in particular is someone who is absolutely outstanding I think she's on like 43 tackles the only one of the few players above 20 tackles that hasn't missed any and she's just outstanding around the pitch but having Kleena in the background nipping at her heels it adds that bit of competition as well because that's what players want you want to be kept on your toes and thinking I need to be really sharp this game or I could lose my place the next game and as a coach I think he's definitely give that um, message out there that it's very possible that you can yeah, and you also want to believe that the best players are being picked on merit as opposed to because there's some row going on with the association. Yeah, and that's it. And you, you've, you you know, obviously you had to, you know, she didn't come in, Clean didn't come in straight away. So there was obviously conversations going on in the background between um, Scott and, and Kleena. And look, it seemed like the right time. I think there could have been an injury as well um, to, to Sarah Delaney at Hooker. So she came into that environment. And I suppose um, it's an environment that they've already formed. So she's coming into that and she has to, you know, work in it and adapt how she goes into that. And I think that's brilliant as a coach to watch those kind of personalities coming into a squad because maybe before she would have been a leader in there whereas Dave she hasn't been around that uh, squad for a while so I think it's brilliant to get her into that environment and look what she brings on the pitch is absolutely unbelievable especially in the ball carrying area and just the way she she kind of commands excellence from the players around her. To go back to the conversation with uh, Helena Rowland she was saying basically that the team are trying to evolve their style of play because it's been unsuccessful at the very elite level in World Cups uh, it has been very successful though and uh, they have an incredibly strong pack a really good kicking game which she was talking about just trying to be better increase the skill level their, their passing and, and be more uh, I guess difficult to defend against so uh, hopefully while they're working out how that works maybe there's a little <laughs> bit of dirty diesel in the tank and it takes a little while of sputtering this weekend yeah, I think the the main thing I'd be saying is keep that ball away from that back tree in particular. Um, I wouldn't be kicking the ball to them because Ellie Kinzone in particular, I think she's 433 metres ran already. She's absolutely clinical. Abby Dow on the wing, their back tree are just electric and it's clicking for them. But I've definitely noticed with England, um, I suppose this Six Nations, there's definitely a lot more er errors than I've seen. They always resort back to, I suppose, that maul that pick and go that tight dominant carry which we know they're good at but when it came to that end of the World Cup final I suppose and that you you would have put your house that they were going to catch the ball in the line out maul it over things went wrong and they essentially lost it because they, they could have gone for a couple of three pointers earlier as well but they were back in their maul so I think they've looked at that and tried to expand it so I've definitely seen the centres in particular there hasn't been any you know partnerships formed Scarish doesn't seem to be getting herself back in there so it's it's an interesting time in in how England are attacking, but uh, oh my God, their skill level are are is absolutely through the roof. They're just trying to raise it to, to a new height again. And with Ireland's defence being the way it is, I think it's it's going to be a good battle for definitely the good ter good start to the game. Anyway, thirty minutes, I think Ireland will give them a good rattle. There's something like forty odd thousand tickets sold earlier on this week for it, so it's going to be a great atmosphere. The English crowd will be expectant. What do you expect? Yeah, look, I think it's going to be a brilliant atmosphere. As I said, um, I think Ireland are going to have to be at the races. Um, we saw it against France, so they absolutely lifted it for France. Unfortunately, it didn't happen against Italy. But I think off the back of that Wales win, they'll have a little bit of confidence around them. There's also absolutely no pressure these days playing England. Do you know what I mean? There's no one expects um, them to go over to Twickenham and, and win. So I think with that kind of pressure off their so shoulders, having 
gotten the win last week. Their defence has improved massively. I think we'll be we'll see a good crack of it for the, for the first 30 minutes. And if they can sustain England, I suppose, to a couple of scores in that first half, it's going to add to the, the belief of their system. But I think it is, I think Ireland need to score because we've seen last week how England, you know, they, they're putting teams away and their, their, their defence, I think they're the best defence they're on... Um, 92% or something without missing a tackle. So look, they are very good defensively as well, but I think this Irish Irish attack is starting to evolve. So I think scoring a couple of tries against England away from home will be absolutely brilliant for this group going into that Scottish game at home to finish it off. Yeah, and as you say, making sure that the heads don't drop and that they don't uh, throw the towel in at any point will be a significant sign of progress and a culture shift and while they might be overmatched at the moment uh, this is going to be a, a long journey to get back to the point where they're as good as your team was before we go uh, talking about ticket sales Leinster Rugby have this afternoon announced 82,300 tickets are sold Croke Park is a sellout for the Investec Champions Cup semi-final it's pretty remarkable really Unbelievable, Ger. Would you believe I was one of those people to, to buy a ticket as a Munster fan? I I, I I put money into the pot and, I, and I'm going up to the game. Look, it's it's unbelievable. I think any match in, in Croke Park is amazing, but Leinster even lower in the price of the tickets, making them accessible for, for most fans to get, you know, the occasion of playing Croke Park and by God, the rugby they played against La Rochelle uh, the last day, it's going to be something special watching them play there. Yeah. All right, on that note, Fiona, great stuff. Enjoy the game. Thanks a million. Cheers, sir. Talk to you later. Rugby on Off the Ball.